Kiwi 2 had two power plants during her 40-year career. The ship was built in the 1960s with a steam turbine plant. This was replaced in a massive refit during the 1980s with a diesel power plant. Kiwi 2 was always a fast ship, but the steam turbines that she started her career with were unreliable. There just wasn't enough redundancy. So when Cunard decided to re-engine the ship, they made sure that this wasn't going to be a problem again. The new diesel power plant made Kiwi 2 even more powerful than before. In fact, she achieved a maximum speed of 34 knots during her 1987 sea trials, which makes her the fastest modern merchant ship. Fun fact, ships these days aren't built for speed as a priority. As long as they can maintain a minimum speed, there isn't much need for them to be able to go fast. Cruise ships tend to have more relaxed itineraries. Even the only currently operating transatlantic liner, QM2, can't match Kiwi 2's speed, even with her gas turbine switched on. When Kiwi 2 was re-engined in the 1980s, Cunard replaced the steam turbine system with an entirely new, modern, diesel-electric power plant, which included new engines, propulsion motors, propellers, and other machinery. Over 4,700 tons of scrap was removed as part of this process. To get it all out, they actually removed the funnel and lifted it out of the top of the ship. Kiwi-2's engine rooms had been designed for big, round steam turbine engines. The new power plant consisted of nine medium-speed MAN BMW diesel electric engines. Each of these nine-cylinder engines was about the size of a London double-decker bus. The new layout had four engines in the forward engine room and five in the aft. This allowed for an amazing view from above. In older ships, reciprocating or turbine engines directly drove the propeller shafts. Kiwi-2's diesels didn't. Instead, they created electricity. Each engine could produce 10.5 megawatts of power. Times that by 9 and you get 94.5 megawatts, enough to power Southampton, in 1987 at least. Around 9 megawatts went to supply hotel services. This powered all the lights, lifts, kitchens, cabins and so on. When Kiwi 2 was docked, just one of the 9 engines could supply 9 megawatts of hotel service power though in reality they'd keep more than one fired up for redundancy. Before we look at the propulsion motors that drive the ship, did you know that we have a new range of merch in our store? Our new Seize the Day range will be perfect for your next cruise. You can find a link to the store in the description below, and every sale helps us keep the channel going. Most of Kiwi2's power was used to drive the ship, using two giant propulsion motors. Built by GEC England, each propulsion motor was about the size of two London double-decker buses, and each weighed 400 tonnes. They were rated at 44 megawatts, making them the most powerful marine motors ever built at the time. There were two motors, one for each propeller shaft. QE2's propeller shafts were 70 metres long, and each connected to five bladed, variable pitch propellers. The propeller shafts ran at 72 RPM when entering and exiting ports and 144 RPM the rest of the time, regardless of the speed required. So with the shafts running at consistent revolutions per minute, how did Kiwi 2 speed up or slow down? Well, the variable pitch propeller blades meant that the speeds were controlled by the angle set on the blades. This meant that Kiwi 2 could quickly increase and decrease speed. The most interesting part was when they needed to go in reverse. This was achieved not by running the propeller shaft backward, but by adjusting the propeller pitch and gave Kiwi 2 a stopping distance of 3 minutes and 38 seconds when cruising at over 30 knots. Kiwi 2 also had two bow thrusters used to help maneuver the ship in port. They had their own drive motors, and electricity for these was also provided by the diesels. These days, modern cruise ships have three or four bow thrusters, making them far more maneuverable than Kiwi 2. Though Kiwi 2 did have more stabilizers, four Denny Brown units, most cruise ships only have two. The extra pair were useful in the rough Atlantic that Kiwi 2 was built for. In addition to the engines and motors, Kiwi 2 had an advanced system of energy recapture to help reduce costs. Heat recovery boilers were attached to each diesel exhaust pipe. Heat from the engines was used to generate steam for the kitchens, central heating, water heating, steam for commercial laundry use, and other hotel services. There was also two gas-fired boilers for backup. The engines also powered the huge refrigerated areas where fresh produce was stored, as well as providing power to run seven air conditioning compressors, 186 pumps, and 178 industrial scale air ventilation fans throughout the ship. Kiwi 2's diesel power plant served the ship from 1987 to 2008. When the ship arrived in Dubai, she remained powered up with at least one diesel engine running until 2012. 
Since 2012, these giant engines have been silent, with the ship now powered by landside electricity. However, they remain installed aboard Kiwi 2 as the static hotel to this day. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please give it a like and don't forget to share with your friends. Thanks once again for watching, and until next time, I hope to see you on board.